Welcome back to the Xfinity Analyst Desk and the ESL Pro League Season 5 Finals. Now we get Liquid versus Optic, the North American grudge match. San has all left this Optic lineup after a string of good victories uh, to head over to, to Team Liquid to be the in-game leader there. And just, I mean, a very similar story for Optic, bringing in Jason R to be the in-game leader. A little bit of an incomplete roster, but both of these teams kind of trying to get the pieces to all work together under new leadership. And that's kind of where we have this. A bit of a grudge match. It is, uh, definitely so. And, uh, you know, it's kind of funny to, to see, you know, Stanislaw, obviously, like, being an like, in-game leader in North America is a pretty hot commodity to kind of see that we were talking about Liquid seeing or having more and more structure to them. And then we see the, yeah. the, the bit of the, the opposite, the, the kind of the mess or, uh, you know, the, the bit of rubble that was left behind an optic and what we see now. Cesspool is probably a good way. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> didn't want to go quite there, but, yeah. you know, you did. Uh, well, let, let's start with optic because they're bringing in Jason Army. This is a team that's still, I mean, remember, he was in this team for a while. They, they announced they didn't know if he was, you know, going to stay in the team, be the in-game leader. They have Hayes as the coach. They didn't know if that was going to stick around. Now it's at least a little bit more permanent, at least for this major cycle. But uh, what, what are we making of Jason are leading this team so far. I don't know if his leadership even really exists at this point, right? It, it's new for him, and it, when when an in-game leader is not confident, that's kind of the worst leader you have, right? It, unless the team can get behind that and, and really rally behind him and build him up to be something great. Otherwise, he's just going to have a rough time because a leader is meant to lead, and if he hasn't done it before and he's still new at this, everyone can see that he's learning, and when he falls, it's just like, well, this guy is just not good at the job that we, we've employed him for. So I can't see it being a successful uh, project. Just perhaps the, like, the skill that he brings to the team, like, I mean, he's kind of considered a to be like a skilled play, a skilled player, it, does that offset kind of the lack of leadership in any way? I, I, I don't think. No. Oh, so yeah, and it probably would in, in a lesser team. But if you think about the four, you know, four players surrounding Jason R right now, Jason R doesn't really stack up to those four players either. So he doesn't really elevate the, their firepower in that sense. Uh, and I don't think he's necessarily a better individual player than what Stanislaw was. Let, let me bring this back to a conversation we had off air, Chad. Yeah. Um, is you know Stanislaw as the leader of Optic when they were winning E League when they got second at ECS at the end of last year. It's not like they were doing it off some mind-blowing tactics that they were that they were coming out. I mean, it wasn't anything like breaking the wheel or reinventing anything in any way. So, how is it still difficult to step in as an in-game leader and just kind of replicate that if yeah, you still have all the skilled pieces? I guess it goes to being having that confident voice, right? And you even said it that he was the man who said go. Like when everything needed to be right. done, he was the one to stand up and actually make that that call and have the initiative to do so. Um, whereas you're right, they do still have those pieces. They still have Mixwell, who's fantastic. He's had some really good form lately. Right. Tarek, who's just you know he's had up and down over his entire career, but he, the skill ceiling for that player is huge. Naf, he, he's a bit of a playmaker himself. With all of these guys, they're like hybrid players. They can all open rifle and do it all. And that's the interesting thing with Optic that you don't see in a lot of teams. They have so much diversity, which can also be like a bit of an issue for them. Because if you rely on all that diversity and people aren't hitting their shots and you don't have structure and strategy, that's when you fall apart. So for, for this unit, it's just, it's just a weird place to be. And it's who's going to show up and, and drop 30 if they want to win. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's it's very true actually. Like you have a lot of jack of all trades in that uh, in that team, but you don't necessarily have a master of one. Yeah, right. And adding Jason R is another hybrid player, right? Like he likes yeah. to pick up the AWP as well. So it's even more of a mess in that sense. But if people are clicking and they can run with it and everyone else can get behind them and kind of fill in the gaps that they need to and have a bit of chemistry and a bit of natural teamwork, that's when you can see positive things happening with this team. When they had Stan and they were winning, it was because they had like a, a pylon effect, right? When one guy was going ham, everyone else could find the room to complement that player and kind of keep the momentum going. And that was, you know, a really cool thing to see. Well, I mean, sticking with Stan and even the Liquid roster in general, I mean, this was an in-game leader role. He became a hot commodity so very quickly just because of those successes, just because of how starved this scene is for an in-game leader. And, and he's now got this Liquid team that he's got to pull, this team that has had a lot of talent, had a lot of good players, but haven't been able to put a full result out for any consistent period of time. Do we expect him to be like this this in-game leader that's going to revive and save this kind of team from from its string of you know lackluster performances? I think there, if there is an in-game leader to do so, he's going to be the one. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be with this current five uh, or not. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we actually saw you know a change here or there necessarily happen. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it could definitely uh, be the one. So. Yeah, I think a really weird thing is if we looked at all the teams at this event, how many teams have in-game leaders who started off as in-game leaders? Yeah. Because there's not a lot yeah. of them, right? Even Stan, he didn't start as the in-game leader for Optic. He kind of fell into that role or, or said, you know, I can do the job and, and took it on that way. It's just we don't have any players anymore in both, in well, in the in the whole world, you know, who's, who are, want to be in-game leaders. Even MSO, he didn't want to be an in-game leader back when he was playing. He kind of had to fall into that role and fill that gap. So it's not something that people want to do, but someone needs to stand up and, and really take it by the reins if you want to have any hope. That's kind of how you fell into the as well, wasn't it? 
No, I I uh, I always loved in game leading. Did I, you really? I loved it because I liked being in control. And you I like just bossing like... people around. <laughs> like, yeah, that's pretty that, much that's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. My family's pretty bossy, so maybe you're right. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I know that's why I loved in game leading. Daddy issues for Sponge. <laughs> well, no, my mom. Oh, oh, okay. my mom's, my mom's much better. Boss, Adam is complex for uh, No, but I think he, when you when you get to in-game lead, you set the pace of, and you get to say how you want things to be done. And when things were clicking, which obviously wasn't a lot for me, um, <laughs> I could feel that I had like a really good impact. So once again, not very often for me. So uh, interesting to see the in-game leader landscape at the moment. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that more people don't want to go towards that in-game leading role. Yeah, yeah, it's stressful. Yeah, it's a lot to keep on your, you know, in your mind at any given time. But it's also, I, I would imagine. Obviously, I've always been an in-game leader, so I would always imagine that it's the most rewarding yeah. role as well. well and you know, you have work. you have career safety as well if you become you know, a pretty talented in-game leader. When your strats work as an in-game leader and you've planned it out, it's like a set execute, and everything goes, and everyone does their job perfectly, and someone doesn't go, "Oh, what's my smoke again?" <laughs> it's amazing. Like that yeah. feeling is awesome. All right, we need. We're gonna bring up the videos really quick. So I, I have. Sweet. The knife round is starting, so this is gonna be a little bit quick. Just All give right. me some reactions to to what's Ooh. being shown up oh, here. Best band. Oh, wow! 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 Nuke. Nuke, yeah. Okay, not that quick. <laughs> okay. Lord. You said reactions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll give okay. you like the full spectrum. Yeah, yeah that was good. I, you I guys, mean, right. you guys nailed that one. It's my fault. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> let's be more specific. Let's yeah, talk about happens. let's talk about Nuke here for a moment, really quickly. Uh, well, I mean, Nuke, honestly. Well, I mean, okay, so for, for Liquid Zen, they've started playing it more and more towards the end of the season, uh, and they're actually showing some proficiency on it as well. Optic has never really been afraid uh, of playing uh, playing Nuke either, so it's kind of middle ground for both teams, I'd say. I'd still kind of lean towards Liquid in terms of, you know, who's favorite on the map, but I th probably would have leaned towards Liquid regardless of what map we ended up on in really? this kind of scenario. Yeah. Okay. Uh, not necessarily because, you know, I, I look down on Optic anyway, uh, by any means, but it's just that Liquid should be a better team, just given where they're at, what kind of players they have, and, and you know, the kind of growth they've shown. Because I love that Optic's logic. Just been like, I've been living off that logic Optic. with Liquid for a while <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah, this is fun. But it's a dangerous place to be. First, Lianco, now you. You're all in the Liquid oh, train. I right? don't know. Well, you're not? You're oh, staying yeah. off it? I'm not predicting. I, I don't do predictions. Oh, okay. I'm just yeah. not on the Liquid you're, you're just a rebel. This no. is just going to be a I'm, brawl, though. I'm, I'm, on the liquid, I'm on the Liquid hype train for Liquid versus Optic. And that, that's like that, <laughs> okay. that's how far the train's going to go. All right. Well, either way, we got a couple guys in the Liquid train. If you're on it, type Liquid in YouTube chat. If you're on the Optic train, type Optic in chat. Get your vote heard. Either way, we're sending it over to the casters, Dazed in Blue. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, we are getting prepared to jump into this next North American matchup. Of course, one that we're very familiar with as we've seen it multiple times over the past few months ever since that change did happen. And now we are going to go and head into Nuke for it. One which actually, if you look at it historically, uh, Optic does have a little bit of an advantage on. Last time these two teams played against each other on this map was back at CS Summit. And we did see Optic winning Optic winning it up pretty handily, actually, after a very disruptive CT side. They managed to take it without too much trouble in the second half. I think it was like 16-9 was the final score, something like that. So, that leads us into this next one, Sam. Where do you see this one going now with the current status of both these teams? Obviously, the Summit was like a month or two ago, or just a, just a little over a month ago now. Well, um, I, I think it's going to be a close game. Uh, first off, Nuke usually is pretty close, I would say. Um, especially this Nuke, because you can get a little bit more T-side rounds, but then it is CT-sided usually, so we usually see pretty close games on it. Um, I think both teams are pretty close. I think both teams are going to know what the other team wants to do which can result to, to, you know, closer games as well. We're going to see a Liege kind of running around for Liquid, challenging people outside, really going wherever he wants. He plays really well on that CT side. It's a lot of frags. And then we're going to kind of see a similar role with Mixwell most likely, but Mixwell is going to be opping while Liege is rifling. Um, you know, and it's a really difference in their player makeup. So like, like they were saying on the analyst desk, Liquid is, you know, a different built team, right? So Optic has all these guys that could do all these different things, right? Naf knows how to entry, he knows how to lurk, he knows how to op, he knows how to rifle, right? Same thing with Tarek, same thing, you know, with Mixwell, right? They they all can like be different in these roles. Rush is the same way, except he doesn't know how to op, but he can entry, he can lurk, he can do whatever. Liquid has more like specialists in my opinion, right? Like they want Nitro to be their entry frag. They want him to entry frag. They want Elise to kind of follow up and trade kill. They want Twist to lurk. Right? Yeah. It's it's more like specialist type roles. They want JDM to always be the opera. Right? So it's it's way different in how these teams are built and how they're gonna play. Um just just in the individual roles that each player possesses. It's it's a lot more well defined, it seems. Exactly. But I don't I don't see see in my opinion, the game is to a point where that first off, people are only gonna get better. And as people get better, people need to fulfill multiple different roles and be able to substitute each other 
in different rounds and different parts of the rounds and different strategies, right? And take over for somebody else's spot. So I think while it's good for when a team is, is first getting ready to play with each other, to have these specialized roles and be like, yeah, you're gonna be our anti fragger, you're our lurker. But then as you play more and more together, you need to kind of evolve and other people need to know when they need to lurk, when they need to entry, when they need to make a play. And that's something that I don't think Liquid is quite at. And the main person who I actually think is not quite there right now is Twist. So Twist, if you talk about mechanical skill, this guy, is, this kid is a god, okay? Like he is absurdly good, like mechanically speaking. But the problem is he always hard lurks on T side. He doesn't know when he needs to make a play, when he needs to be the one to step up in a 3v4 scenario as T and just man up and be super over aggressive instead of being passive and things like that. He just sticks to that hard lurker role. And I think that's Liquid's problem right now. They don't really know like when they need to change it up and be the person to take on that responsibility and win the round. It seems it seems in a way that they have that they have that very set playbook, but not a lot of diversity going beyond that in a way. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of the impression I get, right? Like like they're gonna rely, for instance, on CT side on Nuke, right? Yeah. We're probably gonna see them rely a lot on a liege to kind of set that pace CT side. That's usually what they do on that CT side. Like a liege will go outside, he'll fight people, everybody will kind of play off him, right? But you need everybody to know how to make plays in their individual spots. Like, uh, for instance, when that ramp player should get aggressive and try to even it up or make it 4v5 in their favor or make it 4v4 if they're a man down. You know, when you need JDM to do it, you know, and, and things like that, instead of, you know, having that specialized role. That's something that the optic players, I think, are much better at. Um, than, than the liquid side is like, at any moment, Rush is just gonna be like, yeah, I, I need to lurk this round. Oh, I, I need to entry this round. Uh, Nath the same and Tark the same. But then Liquid is better at, at certain areas as well. I think Liquid is probably more defined strategically speaking. Um, I think Stan is is a really good in-game leader. I'm pretty high on him, although his, his tenure with Liquid has not gone well, in my opinion. Uh, they, they haven't nearly been the team I thought they would. I, I said earlier I thought they'd be the, the best NA team um, out of them, Cloud9 and Optic. And, does not seem like that's the case. I mean, I mean, on paper, it, it seems it seems like it yeah. works really well, and even the most online matches actually works really well for them. It's just they're, they've been having a lot of trouble translating this to LAN, especially against uh, especially against like European teams. Uh, NA teams, I think they've they've actually been doing pretty good against, but it's it's as soon as they go up against like big European teams, it seems like everything falls flat. Based like we saw at Navi uh, two games back, where they just didn't really get anything going, and there was a lot of like really odd issues, like with, uh, Nitro and Elise not communicating properly out on the outer site, and players just getting picked off. For free because of that, it's just things like that. It like shouldn't really be happening. So it kind of it kind of makes you question, uh, you know, how stuff is going over in the liquid camp. Yeah, and it just seems like they don't really have that resilience that I thought they were starting to get. And what I mean by that is, it's kind of that like fair weather team. Things are going good. Everything's going good, man. Like they're up eight one. They're gonna play like insane CS. You know, everybody's gonna know what they need to do. They're gonna be playing off each other well. But then if they go down 6-0 or it's 6-2 and they're forced onto an eco or something like that, and you know, they're going down and it's 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 looking like it's not going well. Maybe the bickering starts happening. I don't really know um, exactly what it's like in, you know, the team speak or the mumble or whatever you wanna say it. But it just seems like the the resiliency isn't there that I thought they were getting. You know, I thought that they were going to have as well, because Stan is, Stan's like a, the type of in-game leader you want, right? Because emotionally speaking, he just doesn't really have emotions, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it doesn't matter if he, if they lose the most ridiculous round ever, it's just going to be the next round and he's not going to like get angry or anything like that. He's just going to move on, right? Which is what you want. But at the same time, it just doesn't seem like Liquid is kind of following that mentality and that mindset, right? Maybe like when they go down, they have a pretend, uh, you know, it, it piles on is what I'm saying. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a very, it's a very snowball-y thing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that if stuff starts going, well, it's great. They get even better and better as the confidence starts going. But uh, if they start off poorly, then it's probably going to continue poorly unless they have like a massive round to swing things in the other direction. That's usually what it relies on, as we've seen from Liquid plenty of times. So we're still waiting, folks, for the teams to ready up. Should be at any moment here. Um, as soon as, like I said, just, just waiting on the players themselves, as soon as they have readied up, that is, as far as I'm aware, the cause of the delay at this point. And uh, once once we do have them readied up, we will be getting started with this map. But again, it's a Nuke Team Liquid taking on Optic. 
right here at the very start of the ESL Pro League group stage. It's still on day one here now, with these teams still trying to battle for their positions in the arena this coming weekend. I, I do think that is like one of the most difficult steps, though, to take as a team is being down like zero to seven or something like that and actually coming back. It, it's, it's so difficult sometimes because you'll play against teams like SK, uh, G2, for instance, and these teams will, uh, Astralis too, you know, they'll preemptively adapt to the rounds prior and kind of get in your head and then play off of that. And if you're red in those situations where you're down like that, it could be just so bad and, and you could go down huge. Um, and I do think that's one of the toughest things to, to you know, improve upon it. Like that, like taking that step from, from being able to come back from, from big deficits, which it seems like Liquid probably can't do right now, and have that resiliency is one of the toughest steps to take as a team. So once again, the big things to look forward to here be taking a look to see if Nitro and Elise are able to kind of get themselves back in shape after the uh, poor form that we saw in the first game. Both those guys, for the most part, showing up pretty MIA. And as you were mentioning as well, Twist, although he had a few good moments, was really never able to show his true potential because there was just, especially on the CT side, uh, so much was being asked of him. Uh, besides that, JDM, you know, this is this was a good thing is that JDM had himself a good start that we that we, we needed to see from him as an offer. Uh, so at the very least, they have that going for them, but it's really the other three key players that we need to see getting back into action now and I mean even Stanislaw was having his moments it, it, at least he was he was having good setups and whatnot to like lurk and try to flank in a lot of those in a lot of those rounds just for whatever reason Navi always had the read on it was able to counter him back out so maybe this will work a little bit better if they try to play in a very similar way uh, against a team like Optic which is obviously not going to have as, as much overall game experience and whatnot uh, when you look at just the two teams past histories yeah I mean we're, we're definitely going to need to see something more out of a Legion Nitro like you expect them to to kind of set the tone, set the pace, and it was just not there for them on train. But, you know, it is a new map. It's it's different. It's against two teams that know each other a lot better than they, you know, can predict Navi's going to do and whatnot. Um, although I don't think that's, you know, that much of an excuse. I, I think they should be a lot more familiar and ready to play against a team like Optic. Well, we are getting live into it now, of course. This game is being played by the players on Intel i7 processors. So let's get into the pistol round and take a look here now. As Optic is going to put a lot of their defense, well, actually up on the A-bomb but that could prove problematic. However, it may actually work out for them now, as all of a sudden, Liquid's bypassing this, going into hell. How is this going to work out for the mix? Well, but you have a first kill. Twist is able to battle it up the ladder, and then Stanislaw picks up an additional kill on the outside, too. It works out for them. They get that control, and now Nath tries to rotate out, but he has been followed out by JDF, and there's a leaping shot from Elise to take out Jason R. We do see Twist falling down here. Now it's down to Tarek to battle it back in a 1v3 scenario. He's found the one pickup. He's got a second one in the open, but he's pushed out by Stanislaw to end the pistol round in the favor of Team Liquid as they started off with a chaotic strat that seems to work out well for them. Yeah, not much help from the player in CT spawn. I think that player uh, went up the ladder to kill Rush, actually. And Jason R probably should have came, watched the ladder, maybe Rush goes towards CT spawn to help that player outside of the catwalk ra uh, rafters. So the rotation wasn't really there from Optic, despite having a very early call from Nath. In the second round, Optic are going to try to buy up to the best of their own ability, but as usual, it's not going to be the best buy. There can still be some good kills being netted, though, and it's Mixwell that's finding them all. I think he misses that third player to his left, but still. The two-man pickup is certainly going to be great for him. Now his teammates need to try and set up for success and follow through to see if they can eco upset and bring this into a 1-1 game score. So at the moment, they just have Tarek on the outside, but Team Liquid is going to completely bail on most of their outside pressure after they've lost both Nitro and Elige. They're two big land players right at the start of the round. Stanislaw, though, good timing on this lurk around, catches Jason R before he's even in position, and is almost going to get the walkthrough in the second kill as well. It doesn't seem like Nath is ready for that one. And, well, there we go. They pretty much take down everyone else in the A-bomb site, following up those heroics of the start from Mixwell. It is down to Tarek now, and he's already at 2 HP. After finding himself in a small battle inside of Mini, he's going to get pushed back out over here, where well, I think he may just end up looking for the scout or another gun that he could pick up and then try to save it for the next round. Yeah, just pretty poor rotation by Optic there, not kind of communicating what's going to be open in those situations. I mean, there's no reason to be in a 3v4 like that, know that outside's open like that, and not have all your bases covered. There's, there's just no reason for that to happen. Um, definitely a round that Optic should 
you know, probably win, honestly, in that scenario, but at least get a couple more kills. I mean, you, you gotta expect Stan to be around there. Uh, when you have no outside presence at all. Third round should just be the usual walkover round here with Optic pretty much having minimal investment. I think they buy the P250 and that is it. So they're not going to be having a large amount of uh, large amount of security placed into this round. And Team Liquid should be able to claim this one with relative ease. As we can already see, they've got lower sight fully under their own control, just checking out a few of those hot spots, like inside of New Toxic, Decon, and I think elsewhere on the site, just to make sure that there aren't any surprises from the Optic camp. That seems to be what seems to be the way that things are going to end up playing out here. As this Nitro pushes through, finds the one player that tries to hide out inside of Decon. That's Tarek going down in the last two are pretty detached from this whole situation. Rush hiding behind the water coolers there may have been able to pick up one kill. And he got close. Brought a player down to 18, but Nitro and JDM were also brought down relatively low and they did not succeed in dying there either. So everyone stays alive and this is great for the money build up at the start. So they're going to keep those SMGs, maybe get a player down vents. Usually a good idea when you have those SMGs. Maybe sometimes you just go for an upper rush, especially knowing that they don't have much utility since they did fully invest on that second round. Now at the beginning of this round, it is going to deploy for a little bit more outside pressure, but it's not going to be huge. We just see just a few players trying to push up on the catwalk here on the left side, but they're moving very quickly to try and go for an upper play here. As you can see, moving in, there's not a lot of defense set up in this site either. Rush has already gone down. Tarek and Naf trying to swing back in to save this, though, and Naf may have well just done it. Him and Nixwell saved the day and shut down what otherwise appeared to be a relatively successful hit from Team Liquid. Yeah, just an insanely fast rotate there. I'm wondering how that came to be. I think Naf is usually the ramp player, and he might have just smoked off ramp and immediately went to lower or something like that. Um, but they had a lot of players there very, very early on. I think that was four players um, all rotating right away. Yeah, so off of that, now Optic have found their way to get back into the game nice and early on here. Preventing Liquid from getting any more than that three rounds, at least the start. Interesting boost up coming back in though, and this may actually net oh, them a kill, shit. and it works out beautifully. JDM lines up the shot on Mixwell. He doesn't even know what to think of it. Tries to bail out, but it's far too late. Down he will go, and now Team Liquid get themselves the early 5v4 advantage. Yeah, that was that was awesome. <laughs> what a great way to get a kill. JDM gonna be trying to see if he can pick anything else up. Further back on top of the big red box. The rest of the team is just following through with the usual smoke setups. That they can, <clears throat> excuse me. Get themselves down to secret to start to move over towards B control. There used to be um, <laughs> these these CS like movies called from Pubmasters. Have you ever seen those? No. Oh, it was like the coolest stuff. They do like these crazy run boosts and everything. It was it was insane. It reminded me of that. <laughs> well, now Team Liquid getting ready to deploy to the lower site. Nath's gonna drop in and see if he can get the kill. And again, nicely found from Nath. Picks up a great kill against the Legion. That's gonna, I think it's just going to stall Liquid's plans here for a few extra seconds. See, they are still able to get themselves the plan onto the ground, but CTs are flooding in relatively quickly, and they've got great positioning. Actually, in a, to a certain degree, better positioning than Team Liquid, as they have most of this site under their control. They just have to push the few over here towards Decon back a little bit, and they should have great presence here. That's not even Smoke's going to go over top the bomb. Tarek jumping on for the defuse. He may just be able to steal it here, but no. Saved by Nitro and Stanislaw. Twist will get traded out by Rush just seconds later, but time is getting low, so off they need to move in and try to shut this down quickly and is indeed down to Nitro. Messes up that spray first, finds the correction, but now he's out of ammo. Jason always gonna move in, but Nitro beautifully shot in his Glock. Two kills out of nowhere. And he saves the round for Team Liquid as they're gonna go back into control with a 4-1 advantage. Yeah, 4-1 advantage and putting him on a save. Um, the smoke, you know, diffuse, it doesn't really do much in that scenario. I think it's because, you know, obviously they only have to spam a, a very small portion, right? A very, very small area. I think it's a lot better to smoke out the door and just get in a little bit of a spam battle. So you tap the bomb, you wait until they spam, you see where the bolts are coming from. It's, it's really easy to counter spam and get those kills. So Optic not being able to follow through despite the great, again, fairly fast rotation and great positioning that they seem to have for the retake. Just wasn't able to follow through with those last one or two kills, and that ends up costing them the round that now causes them to be reset here, where they are going to be on a minimal buy again in the sixth round. And look at all the control that Liquid already has, just, you know, 
30 seconds into the round or so here. Moving in, they've already got pretty much all of outside under their wraps, but Nick Swole able to pick up one kill. Jason R is going to make an attempt to this two moves out, gets a double. JDM and Nitro both going down. Now he's got the AK in hand, and this is a 4v2 advantage to Optic Tarek. Swinging in from the flank, destroys Stanislaw, and now Twist sits alone in a 1v4, trying to push himself into the inner bomb site, but there's not really a whole lot that he can currently do. The bomb is sitting down on the ground just outside of CT spawn towards like hell and whatnot. And while well, he has like utility to play with here, 50 seconds remain, that's a lot of time. But he has to use all of it if he has any intention of swinging around to attempt to clutch this out. More than likely though, we'll end up just slowly kind of lurking around the map, picking up any additional kills that he can before he eventually goes down. But he is gonna take the route through upper here. And he jumps up on top of the boxes and gets himself that nice little amount of heaven control. Trying to spot that player way back towards CT spawn. That is gonna be Nath, now armed. The op actually wants to use a great read against Herrick as well. Just catches him moving in through mini and is able to take him out there. Oh, time running low, however. He's going to attempt to try and swing back out here to see if he can pick up anything else. Out into the open, though. And against the op is where he will finally meet his maker. And Nath will take him out of the play, giving Optic a second round where they had basically no business doing so. Yeah, Jason R hits such a sick one tap on that, that second player. I'm not sure who that was, but that was just a hard read. They went and killed those players going underneath heaven and on top of the catwalk. And the thing about outside is it's so easy to get flanked once like one player goes down because you have to watch Seeker, Big Garage, players coming from mini, um, you know, obviously players under heaven, on top of heaven. Like it's it's really difficult once things start going bad if you're all the way out in the open like they were. Now Team Liquid more than likely going to end up going for another interplay as their money has been brought down really low and this Molly is going to get in their way of it too. Flashbang is great against Naf early on though. Does allow for Liquid to get a whole lot of presence in this site before Resistance even thinks about working its way in from the CT side. Look at that, smoking out towards Heaven as well. Completely denying both of these Heaven players the ability to do anything. And if they stayed inside, they might as well have been dead in that situation. Right save from Stanislaw to pick up the one kill, but Jason R is going to be able to move in to trade that back out. But now the plan has gone down, and while well, Optic weren't actually able to spot all that much from within the site, so Liquid actually has a huge advantage right now. Mixel can't even get his op out in time. The tables have turned to a huge degree, and now Optic are down to just two players themselves. Jason R with a nice re-entry kill, though, takes down Twist, and Rush needs to find himself a path into this one. As if he doesn't, in a moment, he's going to be flanked out by Elyse on the backside, and indeed, that's what's going to happen. Elyse shutting out Rush, and with JDM picking up the kill on Jason R, Liquid steal back the round that was just taken from them. Yeah, both teams just completely countering the other one. Uh, Nitro, great two kills right there with the Omp. We saw the round before, Optic wins with just pistols. They, they stack underneath and around CT Heaven. And then, you know, Liquid on, on the upper retake just goes upper, he gets the smoke down. Plays the round after that to perfection. So, trading rounds back and forth. Now we see Elyse already has a lot of outside control. A couple of wall smokes gonna give him access to secret. Yeah, just moving up pretty quickly, pretty straightforward towards it. Here's the thing though, Naf waiting with a shotgun. Molly actually keeping him a little bit further back too. This could work out in his favor with a big stack of players is gonna be the problem. Moving in, gets one, does half the damage to the second one with just that one shot as well. But he does get traded out by JDM a moment later. So there's full secret control gained by Liquid. However, they were scouted out in the process. So it's not a full victory for Liquid at this point in time. They only went one to one and they took heavy damage on JDM too. They may have to look for another avenue and they may find that over towards Heaven with Jason R peeking out to try and investigate it. He does find the kill on the JDM. He's got to be careful close up though as Stanislaw's going to hear that reload so he'll walk right up, take out Jason R. Another kill comes in from Tarek though and Rush is able to hold from on top of the shed. Nitro steals one more but now he's alone and Mixwell finally pushing out from Secret finishes off the job. Just no team able to win a consecutive round here. Um... Yeah, just walking up to T Heaven, you figure they, uh, you th you'd think they'd win that round, but the rotate by Optic, they didn't really have anybody ramp or anything like that. They all just kind of played for that. And just, just super fast rotation, so. Everybody there to, to trade kill for Optic. And so Nap is still actually going to find himself working with the shotgun for this round, but Liquid going for much faster outside control, not doing the wall smokes this time around, basically just rushing into it. And Mixwell is going to end up being the first target on the board, more than likely with him being pushed back behind the alley box, basically having to hug it too. He's, he didn't even notice Nitro pushing him from that right side. So Nitro is going to pick up an early kill for free here, giving them that 5v4 advantage as they overwhelm the outer presence. But here's the thing though, they fall into a pattern with this. Sophic should be able to recognize what they're doing as they've done this before. 
Especially if they do try to set up for another just direct upper hit by having a few of those players divert over towards mini. We'll see in a second, but it's appearing very, very similar. They attempt to crunch in through heaven for a second time now. Optic sitting, I believe, with two or three players still in that site to defend it. And a few more that can quickly rotate up from underneath. Now in they go. Rush first at the bat. Doesn't realize just how many players there are. So tries to take that battle to not pay out. But Tarek finds a massive impact there, getting a double kill. Naf only able to find one, however. So it falls to Jason R to clutch 1v2. Escapes up through the vents. So has himself a position in the site. Now has to actually bargain himself for the 1v2, though. And both players from Liquid sitting in that same position. Did some great damage to the first player, bringing him down to just 24 HP, and he gets the first kill as well. But they double peek it at the same time, ensuring that they can close out on that one and securing themselves a sixth round now. How many rounds have we just traded back? That was the fourth. <laughs> Actually, can we can we open up a scoreboard to see that? Yeah, it was one, two, three, the six rounds straight now. No one has been able to win two in a row. I mean, that was, that was looking scary for, for Liquid as well. Um, again, like the rotate is just there so fast everywhere they're hitting. Well, it's Optic's turn to try and battle things back as otherwise Liquid are already looking great here so far in their first half on T side. Six rounds picked up and doubling the scoreline of your CTs. If they can continue that pattern to the end of the half, they're going to be in great shape to try and claim this map. As for the most part, Optic's land victories on Nuke have come off of relatively strong CT sides. And if they're denied that, this is where things get very, very drastic for them in the second half. To start off this round, however, Liquid are going to proceed forward with that outer control. Just not doing, the, not doing the wall smokes, but just smoking off all the usual positions. And the Molly, of course, in a secret too. So they can try to wrap back in and take that control once more as Optic are looking light on their buy. So it's going to come down to these close-up battles. If you clutch headshots in one of them, they may need to be able to find really the only things that can save Optic and allow them to stay in this game for another round to try and uh, battle back and forth and back and forth again on the score. And Mixwell, well, well, he does find himself kicking at the same time as Elyse, but Elyse is going to get the better from on this time around, knocking him out of the play. And now Liquid will be able to move in and pretty much have full control surrounding the sites. Twists even up on top of the roof here is able to counter out Jason R, who pushed all the way inside of the T lobby way. So I'll have to try quite a few different things, but so far none of it really working out. But are finally going to swing in here, take control of the upper A bomb site. And they're having no problems with that at all. Terra trading out that one kill against Twist, but that's going to be the only kill they find as Liquid finally end this streak and solidify their second round in a row in quite a while. Yeah, and I mean, all the trading back and forth really favors the T's as, as now they have a pretty big economic advantage. You know, assuming they win this round pretty clean, uh, as there is only four USBs and a P250 on the board for, for Optic. And it's just been steady stream of outside attacks besides the one time that they just grouped up and went inner on the one round that, you know, was like super important to do that, where they played a retake at inner. Optic did, and Liquid takes advantage of it, but they've been going outside almost every single round here. Liquid looking into a more sort of... Uh sort of default type of strategy for this round, however, as they do have uh, quite a few players getting ready to just go for a direct play towards A, not using all this outside control that they've been bargaining for for most of the half so far. More just a straightforward push out the door. As you can already see, they, they blew the door open and Twist has kind of gone hunting. There's a large outside presence from the CTs for obvious reasons. It's just this time the gamble is definitely not going to work out in their favor as they are more than likely going to end up with just four players trying to position for exits to pick up kills. As in a second, Liquid is going to walk right into this A site, find it wide open for the taking, and plant the bomb as well. They're just going to look to run the timer down and minimize any attempts at rotating into this site. Optic obviously moving together as a group over here towards like Mini. are probably just going to try to stick together in this area and pick up a few of those exits. They're just creeping past at this point over here towards T spawn to try and catch a few of them if they move outside a lobby. And again, just another gamble essentially since they have zero investment in this round. Liquid may head out that route thinking it's safe, but I think Liquid actually read into this one and most of their players are evacuating either out through mid or just out through heaven where it's going to be open for the taking. And JDM's going to look very confused not being able to find anyone at all. Jason R is the only one that kind of stayed behind and he'll find himself in this battle versus JDM. Just can't hit any of his shots. Finally connecting onto one. JDM is going to be able to close the distance gap and twists, even bailing out JDM there as well. Oh, but no, JDM does fall at the very last second. Doesn't mean too much though. Liquid should be able to buy back into that, into this next round. 
Yeah, Rush not playing too well right now, 3-8. The one of the problems that Optic is having is that they're they have mixed well at outside. Like the I think it was two rounds back when they went above CT Heaven, they had four players pushing towards CT Heaven. And Mixwell is just like there by himself, right? There's no other presence anywhere else on the map. And Mixwell's basically fighting outside. Like you're fighting outside when you play there, and he just has zero support at all. Um, so things like that are, are kind of really hurting Optic. I don't know, Rush's impact has not been been great this half. And I believe he's playing the rotator spot. Like it's Naf at ramp, I believe. But then maybe Naf's playing rotator some rounds as well. I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of varied. Because Naf was playing in on pistol round, but then on other rounds, he's like there in the fight from vents, right? When they went up for that one round, for instance. So, Rush has just can, kind of been out of the, uh, the plays a lot. Yeah, meanwhile, over on Liquid Stanislaw taking charge so far with the ADR, leading the way for his team at 105. Others oh, just lagging behind a little bit there. The tackle pause is over now. I believe that would come in from Optic since they are on the cusp of just ending this with a pretty terrible halftime score if they don't recover in these next few rounds and try to bring it up to 6-9 or 7-8 at the very least. Anything worse than that, that's going to be troubles for them going into the second half. I feel like they've gone like CT have so many rounds though, right? For Liquid or? For Liquid, yeah. yeah, like, yeah. They're just constantly like abusing that, right? And they may try to do it again. No, actually I think they're just going to go for a straight. Oh my goodness, Nitro diving inside and Mixwell having all the room in the world to trade that wow. but somehow doesn't translate it at all. Rush, the only player so far that's been able to translate a kill, but he doesn't want anything to do with the following fight. Jason R is just going to follow him from the ramp room and they'll get this up completely, falling back inside of the warehouse to save. That should never happen. He's dropping into mini. It's an absolute crossfire from Big Garage. You see the player's shadow while he's dropping down as well. I mean, both those kills that he got were in a crossfire against each other. He's in the air dropping down and gets both kills. Yep. That should never happen. So that's a big mistake from... Huge mistake. Yep. I mean, the round's over in 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Nitro makes it happen. He is the one player that ends up going down, finally traded up by Rush, but massive damage was done before he ends up getting knocked out of the round. The results speak for themselves. Liquid is going to continue to propel forward here. And for Optic, well, they obviously were able to save a few of these players, but the money's still not looking that great with an average of about 3k per player. And you can see this again here. Has the cross spray coming in from the other direction. Allegiance is there to help him out a little bit, but it's all Nitro doing the work as he's able to fully spin 180 degrees to pick up that second kill and still stays alive. He's only taken out later when he pushes into the site. Was that a straight out of a pause as well? Uh, yep. And that was probably an optic pause. Yeah, that was optic pause too. So it just kills. Pretty, uh, pretty, pretty demoralizing, right? <laughs> <laughs> pretty demoralizing. You see how they adapted though. They had Mixwell playing outside, very passively inside Big Garage, and a player in Mini and Naf, who is you know the rotator, I suppose. And then I think Rush is playing ramp. Yeah. So now just slowly pushing after they set up the smoke wall. Liquid are going to take that fast secret control, and it's pretty much everyone too. They did lose Twist along the way here to Naf, as I think he just got him spraying through the doorway. But the other four have full control down here. And they obviously haven't been able to push out to the site yet, and there is going to be a little bit of a presence from Optic. Primarily Jason R, I think, is sitting outside of the vents on the catwalk in the site itself, but he's the only one here currently. He will be able to get some support from Mixwell, who's hiding out in ramp room, but he's only got a scout, so that's going to be kind of eh. The other three are way up on top, and they are going to be quite a while away. So you have to hope that Jason R can have a massive hold here. Gets some good damage into the spray, but the problem is he gives himself away with that spray. And Stanislaw is able to take him out before he gets a single kill. Tarek is countered out when he tries to drop down into the vents. Or excuse me, Nap is countered out. Tarek is going to take his place just a few seconds later, but it doesn't seem to matter. JDM shuts him down just a moment after that one. Rush once again trading out one of the few kills we've seen successfully traded out. But then JDM with another pickup from inside of Decon. The Molly into decon but it's actually it's a pretty weird molly it like, doesn't spread at all it's just <laughs> focused in that corner so that kills his plans to try and uh, sneak defuse that one and nitro is just going to take down mixwell to close it on the round relatively conflict free liquid just walked their way into that one and not a whole lot of trades going against their direction and now they're going to be 10 to 3 leading as we head into the last two rounds of the half yeah just fully committing to that and stand goes right behind the planner gets that kill Looking rough for Optic here, man. Three to ten. It's looking like it's going to be a blowout. I mean, on a eco, just pistol armor right now. More outside pressure this time coming from Stan, just going above the smoke. And Optic's rotates is really the story of this half right here. I mean, they just have not been rotating well at all. Now, who's playing ramp for them? Jason's usually upper. 
Jason's, Jason's been Jason's been a rant the last like three rounds actually. Has he? Yeah, that was they changed that because he pause, used to be the upper player. Yeah, they changed that for the pause. Okay. Sorry, I just they liquid never well, goes ramp. It's like the question I've been having this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, as the trades continue, more likely liquid is going to take control of this round with a buy that optic has. Yeah, we've already seen one more player being claimed here. It was weird though because the round before, the last round he was actually playing um, like in the site though, but I think that was like after they already pushed mm -hmm. through secret, so that made a little bit more sense. One of the things that I think Optic should do against Liquid, and it's tough to just play against your opponent like this, but one thing you can do is you could have your ramp rotator, smoke ramp, help outside, and then your ramp player, if outside pressure starts happening, he could throw his smoke at ramp and help outside as well. And then if they're going underneath heaven, you're going to crush them. Like, you're going to have three players fighting there, and you could even have a player at upper at rafters who could quickly rotate to heaven as well, and you could just crush that. Right, and kind of play against your opponent. Um, you don't want to do that all the time, but you know that could be an adjustment that could work. Well, Liquid having one more big fight to get through. Great shots from Chase and R just absolutely destroys Twist. He even gets some damage on the Nitro there when he goes to the secondary spray too. We'll see if he can pop Flash's way out of trouble here. And it doesn't seem like Liquid is actually having a pretty slow follow up here, especially with the added pressure from Hell. As you can see, they're going to molly that HE grenade being tossed in that direction as well. Stan is able to pick up the trade kill on a Taric and then a follow-up comes in. JDM is also going to be able to eliminate Mixwell. Optic with a good start from Jason R, but they've been unable to find anything else besides that. And now Naf is gonna make the same attempt at a flank. One was already countered out just seconds before. However, this one become a little bit more unexpected. He doesn't waste any time going for the kill though. Just immediately pulls the trigger against Stanislaw. And now Jason R trying to hide back over here inside of that little cubby. When he sneaks out of it, Nitro immediately takes him out of the play leaving this into a 2v3, and Naf just not going to be lucky in <laughs> his positioning. Forced through a Molotov in a bit of an awkward fashion. Definitely going to be seeing a Liege take that battle. And now everything falls to Rush once again, who's still way up on top of the ramp room. He's obviously going to go over this since his 15 round, spotting JDM, but not able to capitalize upon it. He'll use the Molotov to get him into the open, but then he just runs back into the site. So there goes that chance at a kill. And now moving back, and they know exactly where he's at. So Nitro will finish the job. That headshot against Rush, putting Liquid up 12 to 3 in the first half. Second half, guys, is coming up in just a little bit. Stick around for more action right here for the EPL Finals at Dallas. ESL Pro League is brought to you in part by Intel, Lenovo Legion, Xfinity, ESEA, Pay Safeguard, Mountain Dew League, Logitech G, and Zowie. Well, it's been a string of dominating first halves, and this map will be absolutely no different. Team Liquid take a strong stride here on Nuke against Optic Gaming, and they have all the advantages going into the second half with a scoreline of 12 to 3. Yeah, and you know, kind of what we were talking about before, well, while it was during warm up, we were talking about it a lot how Optic has all these players that could do all these different things. But it almost seemed like it hurts them a lot in a situation like that, where they're just changing. Like everybody's doing something different every round. There was, it didn't seem like to me there was any consistency in their setup. You know, it just seemed like there's different players at different spots and different roles, and maybe they just weren't comfortable with it, and it just came back to hurt them a lot. Well, now they are going to have to start off with a strong performance right from the beginning of this half. There's basically no room for mistakes. 
Because if they drop this pistol and don't immediately eco out Team Liquid, then they're going to find themselves pretty much with no hope of rounding a comeback unless they can do like 12 rounds straight to take it to OT. But we'll see, of course, here in the pistol. They're going to go for a quick dive out from the Twinkie around to take that outer control and into Mini as well. Liege will be their first point of contact to hold this, but there's also presence from down below behind the silos themselves. Mixwell leaping forward, just walks himself into a kill against JDM. There's a smoke in heaven, though, so Mixwell can't really push into the site just yet. Liege at least has that advantage going for him, but he's losing teammates so quickly. Picking up one, picking up a second, getting a third and now gonna go for the fourth as well runs out of ammo though but he's got so much advantage with his positioning finally his luck runs out though as jason r is gonna take him down and Altic do indeed claim the second half pistol what happened to the squad man that was insane by a those two the, those two shots at the end there was absurd i don't know what happened to his team they just all just melted out there but those two shots were really nice yeah, just... if he knew jason didn't have body armor that's an easy kill too <laughs> but he's obviously going for the headshot well, Optic at the very least get their chance now to forge a path back into the game, but Liquid's gonna force by and look to eco upset. Thanks well hunting for the outside player here early on. He knows he's probably gonna get challenged from inside. Trying to tag through. He actually, I think, does hit him through the wall. It's just only for like 12 damage. His teammate does a lot more than that, bringing him down to 38. And now, ooh, ooh. JDM is actually gonna win that battle at the end of the day. <laughs> As to finally get some in an open area. And it picks up the headshot right from the start of it. Elise is gonna look for a couple of pickups of his own back over by Secret, however, his position is not the greatest. He's going to have to be very, very careful with the way he gives himself away. So Liquid kind of just hanging out inside of the T lobby in the meantime. Now, if they have that 5v4 advantage, they don't necessarily want to squander it. Since they've been able to push back in here, hold these aggressive spots. They want to give themselves the best chance at being able to pick up these kills. And I think Optic definitely suspects something here as they are checking out is going on, and now they're going to try to peek back into it. There's Nitro stealing away one kill. Stanislaw with a second. It's down to Rush and Naf now, who have gotten back control of the T lobby, but Rush is down to 11 HP, and Naf is at 52. So they're really not looking too great right now in terms of their HP, positioning, utility. Basically, everything is going pretty badly for them at the moment, and they have to try and find some miracle work to be able to recover from this. Naf basically just making a whole lot of noise inside of the shed over there towards A, but not giving himself out to Team Liquid just yet. Just kind of hiding in the doorway, trying to see if he can get himself a few battles, but just reloads into the open. Thankfully, JDM, when peeking that, didn't really suspect to find him directly there. And now Rush pushes in. He finds the first entry kill to get into this site. JDM is going to be able to trade that back, though, with the elimination of Rush. Now everything is sitting on half as he just tries to hunt down a few kills. There's players all over the place, but he can't find any of them. And JDM is going to be the one that seals the deal with a nice 3k here to eco upset and crush off the extremes of an easy comeback. Yeah, quite a few eco upsets this entire game, but just six shots by JDM. I mean, a 3K with a scout on their eco round with no armor, that that initial kill on Mixwell was huge, but that type of mid round call where they pushed lobby post the 4v5 are the calls you need to make. And that's why I thought, op or, or excuse me, Liquid would be like a really, really good team because they can make those calls. And then based off that information and the trade kills, they have the ability to, how does he get that kill? Oh. <laughs> it looked like he was just no. full moving. <laughs> That was like uh, those bots in the Operation Hydra, <laughs> where they just get the most ridiculous. You're just like, what? <laughs> that that kind of reminded me of that. Well, now Optic is going to move in to try to get themselves a little bit more outside control so they can wrap over and probably take inner. They may actually try to take a page in a Team Liquid's book and go for that Heaven play as well, since they found a lot of success doing that in the previous half. JDM trying to hunt from two very different angles, though. Does tag down one player, has to check down below now, though, as he's being pushed upon. And, oh, the messed up nade. It's definitely going to cost him a little bit of real estate here. Stan, though, picking up an additional kill is going to make up for it in the event that JDM does go down. But JDM already tagging two players. He's definitely done the damage to justify his death at this point. The problem is his liquid have been pinched and they now need to be very, very careful as things can get out of hand if they don't pay attention. Stan is all now looking over towards heaven for exactly this. First target's gonna be relatively easy to knock back out. JDM, the movement work, somehow got himself outside of the hell locker rooms and double killed on the two players that he tagged already. So nicely played from JDM, still alive as well, didn't even get traded out. And Elise with that additional pickup against Naf just leaves Jason R alive, but not for long as Elise is going to follow that through the push into the T lobby way to close out on the round and put Team Liquid just two rounds away from winning the map. Yeah, JDM's playing really well this tournament. Um, you can see how confident he is right now, right? Um, I, I mean, I know they got crushed on train, but like I said, he played really well. First Navi on train, you know, he did his job. He gave them a good amount of advantages. Um, and that's good to see because I know his confidence was a, uh, a little shaken when there was those rumors about, you know, Liquid picking up Mixwell and Rush. 
And I know that that's got to shake your confidence a little bit, right? Yeah. And so it's good to see him back. And I always thought he was a much better player on land, actually, than he was online. Like online, sometimes he kind of disappears a bit, but on land, he's, he's really swift. It's a lot of good shots. And it's a very promising thing to see from Liquid because you really need him to perform well if you want to take that next level. So Optic now up against the wall have to find themselves some success here. Otherwise, it is basically going to be all over now that they have been upset taking what could be one of their last tactical pauses now to try and sort things out. The money, I don't think, is really looking that great for them, so we'll have to see, but they do. Yeah, even with the money not being in a great position, they just force buy into it anyway for obvious reasons. It's just Tech 9s and P250s, a little bit of utility here and there, but for the most part, the buy is rather unimpressive, so they'll have to make up for that with their ability to entry here. And even that's been kind of hit or miss so far. They just take it nice and slow on the opener, though. Moving in to take T-Lobby control. Also got a few smokes, but beyond that, nothing huge being done on the optic side just yet in terms of trying to actually take control with Flash moving in. They'll now try to go for ramp play. However, both Stanislaw and Elysia picked up the first few kills there. One trade does move in from Naf, and actually Tarek follows it through with another one against JDM. They may not be done just yet. This Molly's causing a lot of issues, though, and Tarek just moved his crosshair off of Stan at the wrong moment. Thankfully, he's able to correct that, though. Finish off the kill against Stan. Maybe just Nitro and Twists in the play here. Nitro, great timing on the peak. Catches Jason R looking the other direction at just the right positioning. So he's able to take him down and bring things back into another even fight. 2v2 this will come down to now. And actually, it's uh, it's forced a split of the two remaining Team Liquid players as well. With the Nitro just hiding out inside of the shed, he may not even catch the, play the guys moving out from the doorway here in a second. They're going to swing towards it. Thankfully, the doorway's closed, though, so he should be able to uh, hear that if they attempt to go for this play. And he's going to be right in their faces, so he knows as well if they are faking. He's got to be careful, though, of that lobby play. Yeah, they swing back in. Still gets the one kill, though, and brings it down to a 1v1. So getting the job done regardless of the mistake of not checking for that. Now Twist can rotate back up. They know time is low. Twist can get in the way, but oh, no! He still thinks he's hiding out in shed, so Tarek just walks into the kill and clutches out the 1v1 for Optic to keep them in this match. Yeah, Nitro, I think, getting a little bit Obviously over aggressive. I mean, he should have died to Nath there instead of getting that kill. He was pretty fortunate for that. Um, I think a better play is probably to, after you get that initial kill on that player that was squeaky, maybe just go back to the heaven. You know, you can go go back into the heaven. Maybe, you know, when they hit the site, get that one kill, then play a 2v1 retake. Instead gets a little bit too aggressive. But, you know, when it's 14 to 4, those are kind of the plays that you sometimes catch yourself making. Um, JDM does have an off. His teammates on a, a force buy, though. And Optic does have a good buy. I mean, they have full nades, full utility. They do have the three umps, but, you know, umps are no joke. Yeah, and so now Team Liquid trying to keep themselves in this game. They'll spread out and focus mainly on that inner site, but they are going to be rather aggressive with their positioning, trying to push back out from the doorway. It's been hit or miss so far with a one-to-one -one trade, but Stan moving in, catches Naffle, still recovering from that nade toss that he just did there. So all of a sudden, 4v3, they've got a little bit of an advantage to play with, and JDM with another pickup from inside of the vents, takes down Rush and makes it a huge swing advantage for Team Liquid here, and continues to pummel them as they try to somehow get themselves into this site. All of a sudden, it's just Tarek left alive. He finally trades the kill into JDM. But it took so many kills to be able to do that, and now he's alone. He's doing a great job of trying to clutch this one back out. That's already the second kill. Two more to go. And he's paying attention to a flank, which will be working its way in from the ramp room. I'm not sure if he actually just spotted it. He's trying to line up the kill against Nitro over there. Just can't actually finish it off just yet. He'll be down at 36 HP, however, as a result of that. And Tarek still has 30 seconds to play with plenty of time to make this happen. Nitro actually preemptively rotates back upstairs in the event that Tarek would try to run around, get himself in through a minion, go for a plant there. That seems to be the route he's taking. So this read from Nitro may have just saved Team Liquid from a potential 1v4 clutch at the hands of Tarek. We'll see in a moment, though. Tarek, he still could check for this and eliminate Nitro. Flying himself real estate to get into the site, get that plant onto the ground. Still has time to do it. He's going to walk in, though. Doesn't even have his gun out. So Nitro will shut it down, and that's going to push Liquid up to point 15. Yeah, almost a 1v4. Lee should definitely play contain there. Got a little bit over aggressive, but at the end of the day, JDM gets those two nice kills. Tarek not able to capitalize on that 1v4, and the, the liquid rotate is looking really strong. You know, their players are getting in spots quickly. They're rotating properly. Even the round that they lost when they came ramp, I mean, they had two players under CT Heaven really early. Like, that should be a hold, right? They just didn't wasn't ready for that Tech 9 rusher or whatever. And then Stan was also below the ramp. So if they all fought together, they'd probably win that round. And it's just looking like two just completely different CT sides. 
Team Liquid here. Just a few more kills away, and they'll have control of this map to be able to get themselves at least one win on the board for today. Stanislaw just picking up a nice double over here, now making it a triple as he finds his third kill against Naf. Just Tarek and Jason R remain alive with the hopes of Optic sitting behind them, but the bomb sitting on the ground inside of the ramp room. Due to the success of Stanislaw, it's certainly not helping with Optic's chances at trying to steal away this map. At the moment, they're just taking it nice and slow. Tarek being spotted by Twist now. Twist, though, having a little bit of trouble taking down Tarek, which could allow him to pick up this kill. But wasting all this time is really not going to result in all that much for Optic regardless. As Twist just smokes him back out, tries to force him back over to pick up the bomb. He's going to end up walking into a gauntlet here. JDM sits alive with the scout. Stanislaw still sits, now boosted up on top of the boxes. Tarek, I think, is hoping to use the smoke to retrieve the bomb and then back up. It actually works. He gets the bomb out of there somehow due to the smoke. So he's going to be able to retreat with that. And Jason R working his way in on a flank. He's going to be able to catch Nitro off guard, picking up at least one kill there. They may be able to make this work just yet. Now they can swing the bomb around over towards the upper bomb site and try to get a plant down there. But with JDM trading that kill, Tarek now going to try to bulldoze his way back in and find a few more trades, but it's not going to happen. Ali shuts it down, and it's Team Liquid that take control of this map on Nuke. 16 to 5 is going to be the final score. Liquid now shooting ahead in the groups. Just like, you know, a lot of confusion there. I mean, like that last round, what were they doing? They have three players just going through a ramp smoke. They have a player squeaky, I believe, and then a player breaking the glass on the roof. I assume they wanted to flash the player down vent, but they're obviously not ready for that. And then the players go ramp too early. It just didn't make much sense. And then, you know, that CT side, though, it was just all over the place, man. We saw different players playing different spots, playing different roles every single time, and it kind of seemed like the thing I was praising them for during the pregame really worked against them, where each player is like, yeah, I'm capable of doing this, let me do this. And then the next round, somebody's saying that, and the next round, somebody's saying that. I just and none, of it's, none of it's working. It just, it just was kind of like a little bit of a mess. And then, you know, of course, just Liquid constantly bouncing back and forth. And then when they took control of that economy, that's when it got really, really bad for Optic. All right, well, to close out the discussion on this map, we are going to send it over to the analyst. Moses, take it away. Yes, thanks, boys. Welcome back to the Xfinity Analyst Desk. That's a little bit of a better look of the Liquid that we that we expected to see in this tournament. Uh, really good stuff out of them. A, a little bit of confusion day set on the side of uh, Optic Gaming. On the Liquid side, three players over 180R for the whole map. That's Pack roll, I think, is a, a good way to summarize their T-side or their map. It was just ridiculous, the amount of territory they were able to get on Speed. that T-side. Yeah. yeah. What was the, the round they had, like, four players get around to, like, ladder on catwalk and then explode into the bomb site through ladder and then they had another round where they had four players in decon door they smoked out planted in the smoke and had four players in the back vent area and were able to win the round it's just like uh what's nobody, going on nobody expects the fourth guy to be there right like that that's <laughs> that, that's the mind game man, right yeah. 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 yeah it's always that so one guy. step ahead it's They're just playing 40 chess the thing that's crazy about this is how much map territory they were able to get with so many players right and they with were, so little resistance yeah and and then from there you have a lot of utility to be able to do whatever you want to do and that's what we saw and they were just so confident in the way that they approached that match yeah. I don't know if maybe that was something where the, the game plan was to like target Mixwell outside or target someone like that, but I mean, he, he had a really rough game. I don't think it's any, he just had a lot of attention on him at all times. He had a 45 ADR, eight kills. Um, yeah, and there was, there was no resistance to that outside take multiple times. They're in position to execute into uh, above ladder with over a minute left on the clock. It was yeah. just so fast. And, and they're able to do so without having to expend too much utility. Pretty much what, what they did to take yard is set down your, you know, your basic smoke wall outside, and that's pretty much all they had to expend for him because they were boosting up DDM. He was finding the picks on Mixwell pretty easily, and then we saw kind of the, the discombobulation in that optic lineup where it's like they didn't really have a clear set idea of what they want to do in terms of rotations. So instead of actually having a rotation in, in place, which needs to be super snappy on a map like Nuke, they end up just falling behind, playing super passively, allowing for, for Liquid to just get free roam of the entire yard area without having to expend anything at all. And that's why you see, you know, the rounds like we saw where they get four people up uh, outside of heaven, have one pop flash through from JDM, and that's just kind of the end of the story. Uh, and if you're Optic, obviously, like, that should be something that's fairly evident early on that you can allow yourself to do. And I'm actually surprised that we didn't see more timeouts because you had plenty to, to take, right? So uh, Yeah, I guess uh, what do they have to fall back on, right? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> well, I mean, uh, in any case, I mean, uh, just if you're really desperate, then start saying, okay, let's play three people yard. Because if yeah. Liquid are just showing presence towards yard for the better part of the game, then what do we have to lose from it? Yeah, it's not working out having a solo defender there. Let's have somebody just immediately off the back go ramp run up towards secret, play from that position, not play passively like you saw the one round with Max 7, but actually try to ha be a bit of a nuisance to Liquid, even though they're at a uh, high pace, you yeah. used 
extended a utility early on, you know, for Mixwell to just kind of fend people off just to buy that extra bit of amount of time. And then you maybe have one guy on Birdwalk to kind of, you know, sh shore up whatever is Mixwell doing just to buy yourself at least a chance of doing something productive. Yeah, I mean, either, either way, that was just kind of a steamroll uh, from Team Liquid. Yeah. That was really nicely done. Uh, if you guys are uh, one of our lucky European viewers and you're around on June 16th, we have the ESL Play Open. Uh, you can sign up on the website. You can see it down there at the bottom of the screen. Come play some Counter-Strike with a bunch of friends, win some money. It's all a good time. Either way, that's it for the North American Derby. We still have one match left in Group B for the evening before we take off for the night. It's going to be North taking on Nottis Vincere, so stay tuned.